In the winter of 1942, on the shores of a lake high in the Himalayan mountains, a forest ranger came across hundreds of bones and skulls, some with flesh still on them. When the snow and ice melted that summer, many more were visible through the clear water lying on the bottom. The lake, a glacier tarn called Rupkund, was more than 16,000 feet above sea level, an arduous five-day trek from human habitation in a mountain cirque surrounded by snowfields and battered by storms. In the midst of the Second World War, British officials in India initially worried that the dead might be the remains of Japanese soldiers attempting a secret invasion. The apparent age of the bones quickly dispelled that idea. But what had happened to all these people? Why were they in the mountains? And when and how had they died? In 1956, the Anthropological Survey of India in Calcutta sponsored several expeditions to Rapkund to investigate. A snowstorm forced the first expedition to turn back, but two months later another expedition made it and returned to Calcutta with remains for study. Carbon dating, still an unreliable innovation, indicated that the bones were between 500 and 800 years old. In this video we will investigate one of these skeleton remains and in particular their autosomal DNA results, uh, their phenotype, predicted traits and of course their GED match results. This is the subject of today's video. Uh, with my Nashakoto, he is predicted to have brown color eyes and black color hair. Uh, with hair ID 2023, he is predicted to have wavy hair shape. Uh, with snipper free, he is predicted to have brown eyes, black hair, and actually white skin, which in this case is a high quality prediction. He was genotyped for almost every single important variation that had to do with skin tone that snipper free looks for. So it's a it's a pretty interesting prediction that it's a high quality prediction and it's a white skin prediction. Definitely goes in contrast to what you imagine uh, somebody with his uh, his autosomal DNA to look like. He does not have blue eye haplotype 1, so he doesn't have any of the other uh, B B BEHs that follow BH1, no BH2, no BH3, no BH4. Uh, he does have some variants for light color. He also has some other variants for darker color, uh, and he doesn't have any ginger MC1 variant. You can really pause and take a look at these variants. I wrote them all on the screen here. He's got this Gina set which increases the odds of boldness by seven times and the Gina set is a collection of genotypes. If you satisfy a certain rule for multiple variations, then you have a Gina set, right? So he satisfies this rule that increases the likelihood of going bold by seven times. Crazy stuff. Um, he's, he's heterozygous for the Pro-Fernantine Pro variation in DRD2, so he does have one European no-go learner variation. Relative to Europeans, he's, had, he's got higher schizophrenia risk relative to everybody else, lower. And um, he's got A1A1 genotype in TAC1. This is quite surprising. Uh, not a typical genotype for any human. As you can see here, higher odds of ADHD, various other illnesses, uh, less dopamine D2 receptors, and very atypical for humans. He's got warrior genotype in combs, which is once again not, not atypical for humans, but very atypical for his ethnicity. Uh, South Asians and everybody who's not a European tends to be warrior, which is a uh, uh, val val, which means higher comb activity, less dopamine. But he's got warrior, which is less comb activity, which means more dopamine. And also uh, does not have derived OXCR, does not have the sociopath gene. Uh, it seems to me that he is optimistic and empathetic and handles stress well. And he does not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which is no surprises here because he's not a European. When it comes to polygenic traits, he's got a above average risk score for Crohn's disease. Uh, he's got a high risk score for bipolar disorder. He's got a average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, he's got a below average risk score for type 2 diabetes. He's got a high risk score for asthma. He's got an average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a low risk score for coronary heart disease. Now, moving on to GED match, this is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. As you can see, he's mostly scoring South Asian. There is some Oceanian, Amerindian, there is some East Asian as well. So, uh, there is some affinities to you know, East Asians and people from Eastern Eastern Eurasians, basically, right? But there is also 13% West Asian, so there is a little bit of Caucasus or Iranian Neolithic-related admixture in this individual as well that you can see with uh, Eurogenes K13. With the Oracle, he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of uh, Chamar plus various Western Asians, and Chamar are South Indians. 
Uh, this is what he scores with Harappa World. Uh, you see most of it is South Indian and there is 31% Baloch. So there is some affinities between between uh, this individual and uh, like West Asian Caucasus hunter gatherers and Iranian Neolithic farmers. Uh, quite a lot of Iranian Neolithic farmer admixture in this individual. He's not an AASI individual, but he is definitely a South Indian in terms of ancestry. He's not scoring any Caucasian. He's scoring a little bit of Northeast European. That's from Indo-European admixture. And uh, he's closest to a uh, scheduled cast, which are the leads from Metz Palu. And he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of uh, Dusat, which is he's a South Indian plus Dominican, or a mixture of um, Uttar Pradesh, the lead plus Igbo, uh, which is Sub-Saharan African. Basically, very extremely South Indian result here. This is what he scores with G25. As you can see, very close to various... Uh, South Indians, which is interesting because this individual was not from South India. He was from the Himalayan region where you would expect uh, You would expect some Indo-European and Iranian Neolithic admixture in this region, but he doesn't have any and with Pondian LK10 as you can see he's only scoring one quarter CHG uh, Only one quarter Caucasus hunter gatherer or Iranian Neolithic related admixture uh, I think this is pretty accurate in terms of uh, what his origins are maybe one quarter of him is actually Iranian Neolithic or Caucasus and he is closest to Tamils here uh, Tamil Nadu uh, Tamil they are in Sri Lanka I think right which is extremely south it's not even India it's south of South India right uh, getting modeled as a mixture of Tamil Nadu plus Australian or Tamil Nadu plus Papuan so even more southern even more south Asian than Tamil Nadu even more stereotypically south Eurasian than Tamils this is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. And by the way, Ancestral South Eurasian here is not AASI. It is not AASI at all. AASI here would get modeled as a mixture of Ancestral South Eurasian plus Ancestral North Eurasian plus some Natufian. This component is some kind of Australoid, Australian native component, right? Because it peaks in native Australian. So this is 32% of Australian-like component here. It is even more extreme than AASI. It's a very extremely South Indian result here. And this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3. As you can see, mostly mostly West Eurasian and East Eurasian. There is some um there is some affinities to sub-Saharan Africans too, but this is probably coming from the like deep ancestral components in out of Africa populations. I don't think he has actual sub-Saharan African admixture. Um, the East Eurasian is mostly, once again, mostly ancestral, mostly from like Tian Yuan man. It's not from any recent East Asian admixture. I don't think it is. Um, and uh, that's pretty much all there is to this individual. Thanks for watching my video. You can download the sample in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Goodbye.